Good morning, South Maine and friends. What a blessing to be with you today. What is the hardest thing that you have ever been asked to do? Well, as you think back over the years, there may be several situations that come to mind. Maybe you've had to fire a friend or participate in uh, letting someone go that you really cared about at work. Maybe you've been kicked out of your home as a young person and forced to move out and find your own shelter, make your own way. If you've been in the military, uh, you may have been put in some dangerous situations, just simply following the lead of your commander, going into a firefight, going into combat, sailing into enemy waters. Been a police officer, chances are you've been asked to enter a dark building, you've been asked to serve warrants, you've pulled people over who were dangerous, and you have been the one who's been relied on. If you're a firefighter, you've been asked to run into fires, run into dangerous situations, and try to, uh, to get people out. And there's other things that are hard, too. What's the hardest thing? Think about if God asks you to do something difficult. In Genesis chapter 22, God asked his servant Abraham to do the unthinkable, to go and to offer Isaac as a burnt offering, as a sacrifice to God. Now, you and I have the blessing of hindsight. We know uh, by looking back and by reading scripture that this literally was only a test of faith for Abraham. God wasn't trying to kill Isaac. He, he was going to keep his promise there. But he was testing Abraham. Now, who was Isaac? Well, think back what God said. Isaac was, number one, the only son of Abraham and Sarah. Now, Abraham had another child, Ishmael, but he was not the son of, prophet, of promise, and he was not the son of Sarah. Uh, number two, he was the son through whom God had made some promises. He had, he had promised to make Abraham's uh, descendants as numberless as the stars or as the sand by the ocean. He was also the one through whom God said he would bless the world. So at this point, you know, if you're Abraham and God says, go offer your only son Isaac as a sacrifice to me, wouldn't you have some questions? I would, but it's amazing here. According to scripture, Abraham did not question God. And verse three in Genesis chapter 22 to me is as amazing as anything that you'll ever read in scripture because it simply says that early the next morning, Abraham rose up, he saddled a donkey, he got a couple servants and, and some firewood and his son Isaac, and he set out to obey God. You have to wonder, did Abraham sleep at all that night? How much did he want to talk to Sarah about this? How much did he want to question God? Well, we're going to pick up in verse 4 and read this together as you think about the time that you're going to spend with God this morning or today. Verse 4 says, And on the third day Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide a lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand, took his knife to slay his son. 
But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Now, if you read ahead all the way into the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 9, we find out more about what Abraham was thinking or believing at this point. And one of the things that Abraham believed was that even if he had to kill his son, that God could resurrect him from the dead. In chapter 11, verse 19 of Hebrews. Isn't it interesting, too, when you think about how the New Testament informs and completes and clarifies the Old Testament? about the work and the, the will of God. Because if you go from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 19, where we learn that Abraham believed God could resurrect from the dead, then it makes sense when you go back to Genesis 22, verse 5, where Abraham says, and I quote, we will worship and we will return to you. Plural. Abraham believed it right then. And I suspect as a father, that is the only thing that sustained Abraham at this moment in time. I picture Abraham weeping and being distraught and struggling and being full of agony as he binds his son's hands, lays him on the wood, and pulls out a knife to take his life. Well, we have no record that Abraham asked any of his servants or his wife any questions about this. For you that are dads, what kind of burden would that be for you to carry that burden alone? Have you ever felt that way in life, that it was all on you? That no one else could take care of the situation. That if you didn't take care of it, it simply would not get done. That if you didn't step up, that there would be chaos or pain. A lot of us live a long portion of your life maybe that way. Those who are caregivers know that feeling. If you don't have help, if you don't have support, if you don't have a network of good friends, you may be exhausted from it all being on you. If you have a family member that's maybe sick for a while or disabled, and you feel like I've got to work, I've got to cook, I've got to clean, I've got to do it, do it all. Or maybe if you're, you're a dad who's lost a job, and you've got a family to provide for, and you feel that burden that it's, it's all on you. Maybe your spouse has health issues right now, and, and you're trying to keep the boat moving forward. Maybe you have a child that was disabled, and that's never going to change. And you have anxiety not only for right now, <clears throat> today, but you have anxiety about who's going to take care of this child in the future. And you feel like it's all on you. I want you to know God understands that feeling. He understands that feeling and he longs to engage with you in your journey. And there is some great news in this passage before us today. The Word of God today has great news for those who feel like it is all on me. It's not. It's all on God. In fact, in this passage today, we come across one of the 12 major names, Hebrew names for God, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides. 
in verse 14 in this passage. Notice what it says. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Isn't it interesting that when Abraham steps out in faith, when he answers God's call, and even when his son is at risk, we might say, God provided. God is always provided. Think about Noah. Think about Joseph. Think about the prophets. Think through the major men and women of faith in Scripture. God has always provided. And he longs to provide for you. He longs to provide respite and peace and share your burden and lead the way in your life. God wasn't just Abraham's provider. He's my provider and he is your provider. Be it physical, spiritual, emotional needs, whatever it may be, God is the true provider. Jehovah Jireh. Man, that's great news, is it not? What does God provide? Well, God isn't in the business of just providing wants. He's in the business of providing the more important things, needs, all kinds of needs. In fact, Jesus talked about this in the Sermon on the Mount, the second part of Matthew chapter 26, along in about verse 25 through 34, when he's talking about something we're all familiar with, stress and anxiety. And he says, why are you anxious? And he talks about nature. He talks about how God provides in nature for animals and birds and uh, things of that nature, that the flower of the field, whatever it may be, God provides. And then he moves to, and don't you understand, you are of much more value than they to God and that God will provide for you that even the hairs of your head are numbered, be it many or few. God knows. He knows his children. He knows your needs. He knows your needs right now, and he will provide. You know, it's interesting. Through Isaac, God provided a Savior. And what need did that meet? The greatest need. Our need for rescue from sin and shame and guilt and death. God provided over and over again. This morning, as you eat the bread, think about how God provided that body. Think about how God provided then later the supper to remember his life and body and his death, burial, and resurrection. God Provided. Think about as you drink the cup that that represents the blood of Jesus Christ.